hello everyone here we are with another interesting video uh, the topic of our discussion is extremophiles or we can say it is the life in extreme environments so next category is psychrophiles psycho uh, is uh, psycho actually stands for the cold environments and files means to love so organisms or the microbes which grow very well in these cold environments they are known as psychrophiles another term is there psychrotolerant or psychrotrophs so these are the organism which are actually mesophiles but because the conditions uh, they vary from mesophilic to very low temperature up to 0 degree celsius so a uh, certain organism what they have developed that they can grow at temperature which is mesophilic to them that means around 25 degree celsius but they can also tolerate low temperatures so these organisms are uh, known as psychrophile uh, psychrotrophs or psychrotolerant so uh, uh, going by the definition again uh, the psychrophiles they grow optimally at or below 15 degree celsius temperature range uh, can be from minus 2 degree celsius to 20 degree celsius while for psychrotolerant they can grow from 4 to 35 degrees celsius so the example over uh, of this category includes pseudomonas and the psychrobacter that is a major studied organism which can grow at low uh, temperature apart from that there are several yeast including candida which can grow at very low temperature and number of uh, these bacteria and the fungal strains or the yeast strains they have been isolated from several uh, cold environments including uh, polar regions antarctic soils Himalayan soils and several marine environments as well. So these are the habitats: glaciers, cold deserts, uh, Himalayan soils. These are the habitats for these uh, organisms to grow. Uh, so again, uh, the same question arises: that how they are adapted to these environment? And the answer is uh, the proteins which are secreted by this organism. Uh, these are known as cold shock proteins, antifreeze proteins, uh, and apart from that. they can also maintain the fluidity of their plasma membrane by uh, having or incorporating unsaturated fatty acids and by producing exopolysaccharides from the cell so these are certain adaptations which helps these psychrophiles to grow in these uh, cold environments next category that is defined uh, that is defined based on the ph of the habitat or the medium and that is alkalophiles alkalophiles if we uh, break the term that means alkali and to love so organism which grow under high ph or the ph above 10 they are known as uh, alkalophiles so for optimum conditions for these organism is uh, ph 9 or above but there are certain organism those which are known as extreme alkalophilic organism which can grow very well above ph 10 or in some cases there are certain organism which has been isolated from various environment they can grow ph at ph up to 14 so these are some mysterical things about these organisms that's why they are known as extremophiles so example in these uh, in this category includes uh, bacillus alkalophilus micrococcus and microcystis which is a blue green algae so from where these bacteria uh, or the organisms they can be isolated so the answer is several alkaline lakes are there which have which are having very high ph several soda deserts are there which are very stable and these two which i have named these are very stable naturally occurring alkaline environments you can see in this picture uh, it is showing an alkaline lake in eastern sierras the alkalinity of this lake is very high and therefore it support the growth of various alkalophilic microorganisms again question comes the adaptations so these uh, organisms what they do to adapt in these environments uh, they have the ability to maintain low cytoplasmic ph then the external ph because the ph of the external environment or the external to the cell ph is very high above 10 so what they have to do they have to maintain the internal ph of their cytoplasm to very low so how they do this uh, they do this by means of coordinated hydrogen and sodium ion pump so you can see in this very uh, in this picture uh, the hydrogen Uh, they what they do they takes the uh, hydrogen ion inside the cell which reduces the ph while they excrete out or they secrete out uh, the sodium uh, ions outside their cytoplasm so this coordinated hydrogen sodium ion that act and finally help in the reduction of the intracellular ph 
so uh, there are certain uh, applications of these alkalophiles uh, there are uh, several enzymes including lipases amylases which has been isolated from these alkalophilic organism which have uh, uses in detergent industries as well next category uh, uh, that is based on the ph again that is acidophile so we talked about alkalophiles so now it is acidophiles which can grow at low temp low ph so their natural habitat is ph of below 5 a uh, unit and the optimum growth is at around ph 3 and and in some cases it is below 5 below 3 so the example in this category includes sulfur lobus is a thermoplasma and thiobacillus uh, an example again is given here the ferroplasma acidor menus so this is an archaea which is an iron oxidizing acidophile and it has the capability to grow at ph 0 Isn't it fascinating? It's because an organism growing at zero pH, uh, obviously, uh, that organism is a very extreme acidophile organism. So, from where these acidophiles they are isolated, or uh, what is the natural habitat for these organisms? Uh, which in, uh, and this include acidic rivers. An example of the, an acidic river is Rio Tinto. It is in Spain. And uh, another example is sulfur rivers. Mines are there. Acidic mines are there. So these are certain natural habitats for these organism. Uh, so uh, how they adapt? Again, the adaptation is uh, of these organism is by uh, the higher relative internal pH is maintained. So as I told previously, in case of alkalophile, they maintain low pH of their intracellular or intracytoplasmic matrix. But in this case. higher relative internal ph is maintained by net net outward translocation of the protons through active and passive regu passive regulation so using this active passive uh, transport mechanism what they do they excrete out the hydrogen ions uh, or the protons from the cytoplasm to the outer environment so overall they maintain this equilibrium so that they do not the cell do not get damaged here is an uh, uh, electron micrograph of sulfur lobus which is an uh, acidophilic organism next category is the halophiles halo uh, is related to the salt so here these organisms can grow nicely in the salty environments so uh, they can tolerate very high concentration of salt uh, and up to 5 molar the minimum concentration uh, of the salt uh, should be 0.2 uh, molar for an organism to be considered in this halophilic category and the example is halobacterium Uh, these organisms are present naturally in the hypersaline environments uh, the examples are great salt lake uh, here is a picture of great salt lake you can see the pink water because of the very high salt concentration and this great salt lake is present in is uh, uh, situated in uh, usa so uh, apart from that we have the dead sea because of the very high uh, so salt concentration of this uh, uh, dead sea there are several organism which are the natural habitat for this halophilic uh, organism so uh, again the adaptation in these organism or the halophilic organism is by increasing the internal osmolarity of the cell because of the very high salt concentration out outside the cell can be shrink you know if you will put something uh, in a solution with very high salt concentration what will happen the cell will shrink so ultimately the cell damage will happen so what they do they maintain the internal osmolarity of the cell so that the desiccation can be prevented so uh, to prevent this desiccation what they do they uh, excrete or they produce certain or they accumulate certain solutes organic solutes in their cytoplasm so these are certain adaptations for the halophiles next category is the baryophiles as the name indicates uh, it is a very picture uh, nice picture showing high pressure zone a heat so uh, it may be very tough for us to uh, survive in those high pressure conditions but microorganisms yes they can grow in these uh, high pressure conditions so uh, they grow best or only certain microorganisms uh, uh, organisms are like they will not grow until uh, they are getting these very high pressure conditions they are they are uh, that's why they are obligatic obligate baryophiles so they grow best or only under high conditions uh, under conditions of high pressure in the depth of oceans they are known as baryophiles so the habitats are oceans deep lake environment and these organisms which are present uh, below uh, 
or inside these oceans or deep lakes they are uh, they play very significant contribution towards biodegradation and marine food web the example of uh, and bar a barophilic organism uh, microbes include halomonas salaria next category is radio resistant microorganisms and here we have an example of the most radio resistant or uh, it is also known as the most toughest organism microorganism uh, discovered till date that is the deinococcus radio durans it is the most radio resistant or radiation resistant organism known till date it can actually it can tolerate and it can survive the radiations which is 1000 times higher than the human beings it can easily survive it so these organisms they can survive high level of ionizing radiations and in some cases they can also survive nuclear radiations apart from that that this deinococcus radio durans i was discussing it is a polyextremophilic uh, organism bacteria which can survive cold dehydration vacuum as well as acid so that is why because of the multiple extreme conditions it is able to survive it is also known as poly extremophilic bacteria so this deinococcus radio durans it has certain specific characteristics which makes it so toughest organism so it has a tendency to damage uh, to repair the damage of its dna so when you when someone just uh, irradiate this bacteria or it is under very high uh, 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 very high radiation so what it does uh, obviously the dna gets damaged but the mechanism or very high tendency to repair its dna that makes it uh, makes it toughest organism because as soon the dna is damaged it is ready to repair it again and again so here is the cell structure of the red, uh, deinococcus radio durans generally it is a uh, it is a spherical bacteria but here the four spherical cells they are arranged uh, in a uh, very uh, nice manner and uh, you can see the dna of this radio radio deinococcus radio durans over here so these are certain uh, the category of microorganisms which comes under uh, extremophiles but apart from that there are certain uh, uh, different categories uh, which can be included includes metal tolerant organism because metal a very high concentration of metal is also intolerable but certain microorganisms they are very nice uh, they are uh, they can survive or they can adapt or they can grow in those high metal uh, concentration as well so that's all for today thank you